everybody. In this video, we want to take a look at importing tree models into Twinmotion. And we'll use Twinmotion 2024. And then we'll also talk about the new foliage material. And um, this is just something that I've seen a lot of people on the Twinmotion Facebook groups kind of wish to understand a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. In order to bring in a new foliage, like a tree or a plant or a bush or something, you're going to have to get them from somewhere online. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use plants from Max Tree. So let's just take a quick look here. Now, Max Tree is one of those websites like Globe Plants that uh, produce a you know sort of voracious amount of models in low and high poly. Quite simply. The, when it comes to 3D plants and trees, you kind of get what you pay for. There's probably some really good free ones out there if you're willing to hunt around. But generally speaking, the highest quality stuff is going to be behind a paywall. I'm taking a quick look here at Plant Models Volume 80. This is just a low poly. Just to give you an idea of sort of pricing here. So I'm just going to click on this. And you can see if we're going for format, FBX, and I'm just doing FBX format, license individual, you can see this pack is about $75 and some of the packs can get quite, quite, quite expensive. Now, I do absolutely think they are worth it. And once you sort of purchase them, they are yours to own. But if you just want to give it a little try out, let's just go here to home. And we're going to look for a high poly collection. And by the way, these are stunning looking models. But if you want to make it easy on yourself, just go over here to collection, high poly. And I'm going to do sort by... And we're going to do price low to high, and that will give you access to a couple of things. First thing you will notice is over here on the left, we do have Plant Models Volume 60, which is available for free. And we've also got some Plant Model Samples, one, we've got quite a number of these actually. Uh, yeah, we've got about three there that are available for $5 each, which is really, really not bad. I mean, put all this together for $15. I don't think there's any tax on these. Some pretty nice tree models that are high poly. You can see that right there in the high poly tab. So you can kind of see here, this is how it's actually going to be set up. When you download something from Max Tree, and I'm assuming the other sites like Globe are the same, I've never used them, but you'll notice that it comes in a zipped format and so what that means is you'll have to just right click and use 7-zip or some sort of basically unzipper yeah i'm gonna go with that to basically uh extract the zipped files so here you'll see we've got our thumbnail folder if we go in here you can see these are really lovely thumbnails of the actual plants and you can also see we can uh go in and we've got our maps folder now you'll notice this is just the the samples i think this was like the free pack you can see there's a lot of maps here and we'll get to how to just clean this up in a minute but yeah a lot of maps and then you have your actual fbx models and i think fbx is one of the default download types and i think that's what you're going to want to be using if you're using these in twin motion all right before we go any further i just want to point out when it comes to the maps uh you can see there is a lot of stuff here so i'll give you an example when you go to the maps this is a lot and so to kind of narrow this down what i recommend doing is making a separate folder outside of this one and naming it for whatever plant or tree and then what you can do is for example go acer which is uh the technical name for a maple so just an acer and you can see searching for acer up here gives you all the maps left click drag out a selection and i would recommend just doing Control c to copy not Control x to cut and then paste this into your new folder and that's going to look a little bit like this here's all the acer maps and here is the acer fbx you know, it just it just comes down to being tidy and organized with your folders which is not something that i am by default but when you're dealing with something with this many maps i do strongly recommend it so here we are in twin motion 2024.1 which is the most up-to-date as of i think today in order to bring in your objects i'm going to go ahead and just click import click here to import and we're going to do geometry and open. I want to show you this. I'm going to open a object here really, really quickly. And I just want to show you this just to see how you should bring this in. So we're going to go to, let's do uh, FBX here. And I'm going to keep collapse by material. And I want to show you why you should not do this. 
So you can see I've brought in this bush and we use collapse by material. Now we've no materials assigned, but you can see one problem with that is that when you go to actually select individual components, because they all share the same material, you're actually unable to select individual pieces. So this is all just the variations that come with that FBX file, basically the different model variations, but you don't have the ability to manually change them. In other words, selecting one selects all of them. So we're actually gonna just delete all this, get up in the digitalis, and we're gonna keep this as keep hierarchy, and I'm gonna import. So you can see we have now brought in our model, our digitalis, that's what we're gonna work with. And now when I actually select individual plants, there we go. I have the ability to move them around. I think that looks really, really nice. Okay, I'm gonna delete all of them except this little fella. And I've scaled this up just a little bit just to make it easier for everybody to see. Okay, so let's take a quick look just at what we've got. I'm gonna move myself to the left a little bit. And I have opened up the materials tab and I'm just gonna slow down my camera. Just hopefully it's not too flickery for you. Okay, if you just brought this in as is, it actually looks okay. Like from distance, you could probably get away with this. It's not structurally right and it's not displaying right. You know, you, you could get away with this. Let's take a look really quickly. The first thing we will actually wanna do, and again, I'm just gonna do all these changes based on the original, just the materials. Then we'll talk about the new foliage material. But if you're just working with older versions of Twin Motion or you don't want to use the new foliage material, this is going to be for you. First thing we will want to do is use the eyedropper on all three parts. Scroll down and make sure miscellaneous and turn on two sided. And you can see. So, what's actually going on there is basically this is not displaying correctly. It's showing up as one sided, there's no, you know, effectively depth. So by toggling this on and off, you can see the display will pivot back to showing objects as two-sided the way they should be, even though they're quite thin. Now, once you've gone ahead and made everything two-sided, we're gonna to have to plug in the rest of the maps. Twinmotion has done a pretty good job finding the albedo, which is effectively just the flat texture map. It used to be called the diffuse, but albedo is the more sort of accurate type. And, uh, diffuse maps used to have lighting baked into them, and we don't actually want that. So albedo is a better term. So the albedo is basically just the color map. Now, if you scroll on down here, you notice a couple of other things. I'm gonna hide our detail slider. The UVs are fine, we've nothing to do with that, but we need a roughness map. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna open up. And you'll actually notice here, we have a leaf glossiness, but we don't have a roughness map, but that's okay. Go ahead and plug in the glossiness map and then we'll just hit the invert button here. So a glossiness and roughness maps are effectively the same thing. They are just inverse or the opposite of each other. And so all we have to do is hit the invert button. We do not have a metallic map because that would just be weird on a plant, but a normal map, we do have that. So I'm gonna again click open and plug in the leaf normal map. And this normal map, there are two directions that normal maps can kind of face at its most basic in terms of, I think, what is the G color channel in Photoshop, but this looks fine. I don't think we actually have to invert this one at all. This looks good to the best of my knowledge. We do not have a parallax or height map, although you could potentially for some models, maybe the tree trunk might have an actual parallax or height map. This one doesn't. AO, we click on that, open. Yeah, I don't think we have an AO for this, so we can just ignore that but opacity map, this we do. Okay, an opacity map is an old map type. It's basically this, if we right click and we just open this, it is a black and white map. This looks like, I think like a one bit black and white map, if even. Uh, it basically just, the white areas are going to show in your 3D program or rendering program, and the black areas will be hidden. This is how a lot of video, go video game hair is actually done. The strands of hair are painted in white and the black is areas where the texture map will not show. All right, so that looks good. Let's close that out. And we're gonna plug that in and you can see right there, if I toggle use mask on and off, the edges of the leaves become visible and invisible. And we're gonna leave that off. Okay, 
that's it for the leaves. I'm going to plug in the rest of the maps into their respective slots for the three other parts of this model, and then we'll just take a look at it real quick. Okay, everybody. So now all of the respective maps are plugged into their slots. It takes a bit of time, but once you get it done, it looks overall pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Let's take a look at this under with Lumen enabled, just for that much better lighting system. And I think this looks really, really nice. Overall, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a beautiful plant model. I, I think this looks absolutely splendid. And um, I'm going to be adding this to my own user library. I think it's pretty great. The next thing to note, though, is if you're using Twinmotion 2024, there is a new foliage material. So I'm going to click on materials here, and you can see I'm just going to hit this really wonderful magic button called clean up that gets rid of all these unnecessary texture maps in your scene. There we go. Or materials in your scene. Standard material. The new foliage material is going to be under this. So you just hold this little button down and bring up foliage. All right, let's do that again. Just foliage, and there we go. If you're going to do this and you want to use the Twin Motion 2024 20, foliage material, it is best to apply this material before you start plugging in maps. And I'll show you why. I'm going to select the leaves again, just these nice little leaves, and I'm going to drag the foliage material on, and you can see it will completely change the material. It's applying its, its own texture maps, with opacity and all that and some of the new kind of features, but it is overriding the original one. So what this means is you do actually have to go back and again, I'm going for texture, I'm going to go open and I'm going to have to plug back in all of these materials, but we do get to plug in a few new ones, which will look pretty cool. Okay, let's go ahead and just put the leaf albedo in there really quick. We have plugged in all of the old maps. So we're using the new foliage material with the other maps put in. Now, one thing you'll notice when you apply the foliage material is your plant is going to start shaking pretty badly. Part of the new foliage material is the idea that imported plants, trees, bushes, and grass will actually now respond to the environment. In other words, they'll respond to weather. So I'm going to click Ambience and under Environment, Weather, and I'm just going to drop the weather speed down. You can see really fast, or really slow. I'm going to turn it just very low for our purposes. It, it is kind of warbly, uh, sort of a little bit unnatural looking, so we're just going to bring that down quite low. Now, I'm also going to bring back up the material, and let's take a quick look at the new foliage material. The color tab remains the same. You do also have a back fade, back face fade slider, which will basically lighten up the back faces. You know, I mean, this is kind of, a, again, adds to that feeling of translucency and light passing through the object. I think it looks pretty, pretty sweet all in all. So let me just put that at a low value. We have options for luminosity, lift, gamma, and all that, but I would rather just let the texture maps determine those. Okay, tint. We do have the ability to add a tint color. So, for example, you could go in here and really enjoy changing the colors of your foliage. Very, very cool option for that. I'm going to leave that back at zero. The opacity is going to remain the same. Now, we do have a new slider for translucency. Now, there's also a slot for translucency map. So I'm going to click on that, click open, and you'll notice under the leaf material, we do have a translucency texture map that we can plug in there. If I right click on that and just open it up, you can kind of see exactly how it looks. And a lot of these newer tree or plant models will have a translucency uh, material that comes with them. So I'm going to plug that right in there. And if we just look here a little bit, you can see we can adjust the translucency amount. Look at the leaves in the back there and just see. Yeah, basically translucency is going to give the impression of light coming through the actual leaves. Now, one of the other cool features is we have foliage and seasons. We have some new sliders here where we can actually go in and force seasons on top, which is something that I believe imported plants could not do before the foliage material. So in other words, your newer plant and tree models brought into Twin Motion will now be able to react to the environment setting. So in other words, you can force them to look like it's in a snowy environment or just, you know, changing the seasons on top. 
We've got some options here for leaf life cycle. I haven't really messed around with these enough to really go in depth and probably a little bit out of the, you know, the requirements for this video. But everything else is looking pretty good. All in all, the new foliage material is really, really sweet. Uh, and maybe we'll do a proper in-depth look at it later on. But I just wanted to show you, this is how to bring in a plant model or tree or bush or grass or whatever, and how to actually assign your materials. And then again, if you want to use the new foliage material in Twin Motion 2024, please go ahead and apply that before you start assigning texture maps. Now, one other thing you can do if you really want to speed up the process, depends on how fast you work with this, you could, for example, always go back to, say we go back to this leaf material, you can just right click on the normal map if you've already set this up. So we can just, I'm sorry, left click and just go copy and then go to the new foliage material, which is assigned and right click and paste this in. And that might be a little bit faster than manually plugging in those texture maps. All in all, um, yeah, this is really, really cool stuff. And it's a great step in the right direction for a twin motion for making the foliage look a little bit better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!